Hello, and welcome to this edition of Commerce Close-Up. I'm your host, Dr. John Bellotti. I'm the Director of Speech Communication at Texas A&M University Commerce, and also the Mayor of Commerce. And as Mayor, we had a, a recent uh, City Council meeting, and members of the Texas A&M University Honors College came before the Council and uh, requested that we support their plan to rename Highway 24, or actually give Highway 24 a different name. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to introduce my guests to this program, uh, Haley Hasek and Brianna Cruz from the Honors College, and maybe Haley can inform us a little bit more about this project. Yeah, um, well, the project itself is kind of designed to preserve, well, collect, preserve, and share the stories of military veterans and their families. And we thought, what better way to do that than kind of the highway renaming and um, a way to inform the public of kind of the role that commerce has played throughout, you know, conflicts and military um, ventures, but also give them kind of a sense of history. Um, Claire Chenault, General Claire Chenault, was born in Commerce, Texas. We didn't know that until we started this project. Um, he was also, you know, the creator of the Flying Tigers and a big name in China. The Chinese people love him. They think that he, um, you know, his role in World War II is very important. You also have Otha Spencer, who was a professor here, um, had a great legacy in commerce. He flew the hump, which is, you know, what the Flying Tigers flew. It was over the mountains. Um, and just to kind of bring that to commerce, it's an educational thing. It's a way for us to give some sort of historical um, relevance to everything that went on. Let's get back to Highway 24 just a mm -hmm. moment. Uh, the text dot won't let you change the Highway 24. Right. But I think it is the, the plan to like call it the Flying Tiger Memorial Highway from yeah. 30, to th how, how far past um, commerce? Well, right now we have permission for city limit to city limit, or yeah, I think so. County line to county line. Okay. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but we would like to go all the way to 30. That obviously includes us going to Campbell and talking to them about that. So that's another city council meeting for us, and we just have to get that scheduled. Um, but it won't change the number of the highway. It'll still be Highway 24, but it'll be like all the other memorial highways you see. I know they have the Purple Heart Trail, and sure. I think um, the 99th Division Memorial Highway, and things like that. So it'll be similar to that. And also some streets around the university. We would like that. Yeah, that's kind of in the works. Um, we have to go through Dr. Jones and some other channels for that, but um, it doesn't affect the town. So it's a lot easier to change university names or university street names and then it's I guess the names we've chosen have some sort of relevance to the university they root the, re the university in history um, are making connections that we have learned through this project mm -hmm. and allowing kind of other people to you know maybe wonder well why is this street named that and then go look it up and we includes Brianna yes. Brianna talk to us please well, I got started with the internship, well, in a class that Dr. Groover offered in the fall of my freshman year, and Haley was helping run that class, and we were studying these oral histories that had to do with World War II um, to, bring, to bring it to life, really, and uh, I got inspired by one of my veterans, Cecil Jack Butler, and he was drafted into the military about three months after he turned 18. And his first battle was D-Day. He was on their D plus six at Omaha Beach, which means he fought on the sixth day of the D-Day battle. And he, um, and he fought all the way to the Rhine River. He was injured twice. And um, it was such a traumatic experience for him. He didn't talk about it for about 60 years until uh, the university interviewed him for the first time in 2007. And then Haley and I got to go interview him this summer Mm -hmm. And that was actually a really neat experience because we found out that his birthday was on Memorial Day this summer. So we got a couple of the interns together, we made him some cupcakes, and with some help from his wife, we surprised him on his birthday. He turned 88, and we got to be there to celebrate it for him. So, Part of the introduction to some of the literature that I have read um, indicates that uh, we're in a kind of a generational malaise because the... Mm -hmm the greatest generation you're talking about now, the, the veterans of World War II, um, and people that may have had contact with them, 
uh, are fading, and so there's not a lot of, of reference anymore to World War II. How did you feel about it when the project was proposed to you? I was excited uh, to, to get to uh, thank these men for what they did, and then also to just to get to know them about their service. Like Haley said, they're just ordinary men who uh, do extraordinary things, who've done extraordinary things for us, and we get to preserve that so that others, our generation, can find out and understand really what it meant to be a part of that history. Now, I understand also um, that there's a possibility that uh, besides the Highway 24 naming yeah. um, and some streets around the campus naming, um, there's a possibility that there may be some murals on the walls of some of the buildings in Commerce. Do you have any uh, input on that? Or we don't. I think it's a great idea. Um, you know, part of our mission, like I mentioned, is getting this information to the public. You know, we get to meet these men every day. We get to sit and we get to listen and talk to them and um, you know, have them tell us everything, but not everybody else gets that opportunity. And so I think in whatever way we can, um, you know, presenting this to the public in some way, shape, or form is fantastic. And that's part of the reason we started the War in Memory Lecture Series. You know, it's putting veterans in front of a group of students and faculty and community members and letting them meet a real living veteran. veteran. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you said the, the War in uh, Memory Series. Mm -hmm. uh, will there be events uh, that we can publicize besides yeah. uh, regular events c coming up? Well, the next lecture is November 20th, and it's a Wednesday. It's in Conference Room C in the Student Center, um, and we moved it to 315 to kind of accommodate classes. Um, and it should be a world, or well, no, that one's going to be a Vietnam veteran. And, um, you know, we don't really focus on just World War II for the lecture series or, um, you know, just Vietnam. It's kind of a, a sampling of everything and a taste of a variety of stories. Um, because that's what we experience, and so it's sharing that. It could be called the Wars and Memory yeah. Project. Kind of. uh, Brianna, uh, Jackson Daly was a previous guest, and he told a specific story that his mm -hmm. uh, uh, vet told him. Is there anything specific that yours mentioned, or was he just not really still up to do it? Well, actually, uh, he told several more stories when Haley and I went and spoke with him. In fact, I just saw him this last Friday, and he told me that he told us more than he's ever told anyone else before. So I do have a couple of stories, not many, but... Um, you have a short one? Yes, I have one that sticks out in mine. Uh, he was on night patrol in Normandy, and he and a sergeant and a lieutenant, a new lieutenant, uh, were walking around doing their bouts, and on their way back, they... Uh, we're trying to decide which way they came from. Now, they didn't have any weapons on them, and they didn't want to get caught by the enemy, obviously, it was camped nearby. And so the sergeant disagreed with the lieutenant about which direction camp was. And the lieutenant said, well, I'm going this way, and the sergeant said, well, I'm not going that way. So Butler and the sergeant went the opposite direction of the lieutenant, and the lieutenant didn't make it back to camp. He actually uh, ended up being captured, and then the next day they freed him, and he apologized to Butler and the sergeant for disagreeing with them. <laughs> uh, thank you. And that concludes uh, this uh, edition of Commerce Close-Up. Uh, I'm so pleased to have had uh, as guests um, uh, Haley Hasek and uh, Brianna Cruz from the A&M uh, Commerce uh, Honors College. And uh, that will conclude this edition of Commerce Close-Up. Thank you.